Welcome to Bitch Talk, booze and interviews straight from the heart of San Francisco. This is Aaron. That's Ange. Hi. That's Char. Hello. You can find us at bitchtalkpodcast.com. You can sign up for our monthly e-news. For behind-the-scenes videos and two-minute clips of our interviews, head to our YouTube channel. If you like what you hear, rate and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. We are gathered here today. (laughs) (laughs) Dearly beloved. Pull it together, Ange. Pull it together. We are gathered here today. today. You've only had a half a beer. What is wrong with you? I know. I'm so jealous. (laughs) Um, All right, guys, we have a special interview for you today. A dear, dear friend of mine uh, we have on the show, Kimberly Carswell. Kim, thank you so much for being on Bitch Talk with us today. (laughs) Don't give me that look. I call her Barley. Uh, it's my nickname for her. So yes. if it slips and I say barley, that's who I'm talking to. But her like name- her nips. Aaron. Just kidding. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Aaron's there. Whoa, coming in hot. Hey, so, coming in hot. Uh, <laughs> Kim, and I act- <laughs> Kim and I actually met a lifetime ago when I was a bartender uh, in in Santa Monica. And um, I don't know that we were immediate friends, but we definitely. In my eyes. We were. <laughs> you definitely grew on me, and now you're one of my dear <laughs> friends. And I've mentioned that uh, I've been taking yoga with you weekly, yeah. and it's really changed my quarantine quality of life. So I wanted to have you on because uh, becoming a yoga instructor is something that happened a little later for you. Uh, mm-hmm. you I think um, to whatever extent you're comfortable with discussing um, how working on your trauma from your past kind of led you to this new career path? Yeah. First of all, I wanted to say that you had no choice in being my friend. (laughs) (laughs) True. Wait, I have to, so before we get into like the deep stuff, I do want to know, that's what she said. Um, (laughs) But why did, wait, why did, why did uh, Barley, sorry, Kim, need to grow on you, Ange? Because you're just that kind of gal? No, no, no. It was, um, she, she cried a lot when I first met her. Yeah, my, my <laughs> eyes going, were like swollen shut. She was going through a lot and I was just like, whoa, uh, how can I help you? And I was, I was about <laughs> to leave for Southeast Asia, actually. So I was about oh, to leave. Oh, shit. And I was about to leave for four months and she came on uh, as, a, as a server. So I had just met her, but she was kind of going through some life shit and she had a and it was day. 7 a.m. And she comes up to me, or the first time I meet her, she's bawling and she's just like, uh, like, and you asked me for something. And I was like, yeah, whatever you want. Like, yeah, we're cool. And I was leaving for four months. So I was like, do you want to use my locker while I'm away? There's tampons in there, you know, like <laughs> help yourself. I was just trying to like make her happy. Aww, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't really know her. So it wasn't that I disliked her in any way. It was just kind of like, whoa, I, I can't really deal with with this right now, I'm leaving for four months, but I'll see you when I get back, you know? And, uh, oh, when she came back, I saw her, I was like, Angela, hi, <laughs> <laughs> I'm better now. Yeah. I'm like, Oh, that's what you look like. Cool. You made Aww. it. All right. We'll get the deep right. stuff now. Sorry. I just wanted to know <laughs> the story. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, where should we start? <laughs> well, I think, you know, um, Aaron and I, it's actually good timing for this conversation because Aaron and I mm-hmm. just, uh, spoke uh we led this conversation about one finding finding your calling and following your dreams later in life which which is obviously something that's hard for people to do because we're full of doubt and it's like you know a lot of times it's like i'm too old to change now i'm too old to try something new uh so i i I would love to hear what led you to your your new calling in life and a lot of that has to do with dealing with your past trauma yeah, definitely. I feel like when you first met me too, I was thinking about it in the shower that you're like one friend that's been there like from like the beginning of my healing journey and then there's like a consistent friend through all of that. So I, I thought that was like an interesting perspective. But yeah, basically it was, you know, I grew up in a like abusive household where my mom was like beating me every single day and like, I don't know, just coming from Asian culture, I guess that's what happens <laughs> in their household growing up. But I was just always so depressed, but not knowing that I'm depressed. And I was just so tired of like being sad and, and feeling the way I did and trying all these other like career paths, like that everyone else thought I should be doing. And 
never following what I wanted to do. And so finally, like after, I don't know, like seven, eight years of like this journey of healing, if you want to call it that, like I'm finally like just doing what makes me happy. And, um, but it's taken me a long fucking time. Like I was doing everything that my mom wanted me to do, everything that like my stepdad thought I would be good at or like what society said I should be doing. And the entire time I was like miserable doing everything. So um, yeah, I'm just like super excited to be helping people. That's just, cause I, I was so tired of feeling and I still go through those ebbs and flows of like anxiety and depression, especially during times like this. But like, I just want to share the tools that I've acquired through my teachers and through the people who I've like looked up to, to help me in my healing journey and just share that with everybody. Cause it just like suffering is inevitable, right? But, like how can we at least manage it a little bit better? So, so yeah, I finally got to like go on a teacher training, which I've always wanted to do since my very first yoga class, like 13 years ago. And I did that last year. A year ago, actually, we just finished. It would have been like yesterday or something. In and then the I did another Costa Rica, right? You went to Costa yeah, Rica? In Cost yeah, Costa Rica. We did a training for three weeks. And then um, I just did another 200 hour training in the midst of it started before quarantine. And then we had to like finish it online, which was interesting. But it's now like in the beginning of it, but it's something that, like, like for instance, when I taught you, I just am like happy and energized and, you know, like I want to do it more. Mm -hmm. But that took me, like, over the last year to build up that confidence, too, you know, because of all the programming from my mom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. you're not good enough. Like, you know, all of that bullshit just comes back to surface. And it's like, what, like, what do I have to give to other people, you know? So I still kind of battle with that. But, like, now at least I'm, like, I'm excited and happy to, like, help other people just find a little bit of peace and like create a different relationship. I just, I'm interested to hear if, and whatever you want to share is fine, but what do you think the points are in this journey that have helped you get to here? Like, are there key moments where you can point out and be like, that was, that was, that was one of the moments that really helped me transform or say enough is enough. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That too. Yeah. <laughs> I know this is going to sound crazy, but like, I remember one day at the place where Angie and I worked, there was this girl sitting there and she just literally was sitting there by herself with a book and she just was like happy and glowing, right? And Angie, Angie's witnessed this firsthand. People will just come up to me and just start screaming at me. <laughs> she always gets the worst customers. <laughs> like it'll be someone who's like one of my regulars and like really sweet and then just sits with her. Yeah, it was an energy. It was an energy you were giving out that you were giving back. That you weren't. Yeah, worth, you weren't worth anything. You you get you you were you were kind of manifesting it. I was now hindsight, but like I never knew. I'm like, why the fuck are people always screaming at me? Like they could just be like on the street and they just come up to me and they're just like, ah. <laughs> and then I'm like, see, Ange, I told yeah. you, like this is so ridiculous. <laughs> And then they look at Angie and be all sweet to her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serving them liquor, though, so that's different. Yeah. That's a different well, mindset, I, though. But anyways, like, this girl, she was just, like, blowing and happy. And I was like, what? What's your, like, what's going on here? So I was, like, attracted to her in that way. And we, like, had the same book. She was reading a book that I had just read. And then she spoke about this shaman. I was like, everything, stop. Like, what are you talking about? Like, and at that point, I lived two blocks away from my mom and hadn't spoken to her in, like, a solid two years like wow. holidays nothing like I mean our relationship has been terrible up until like the last three years my mom and I and um and I was just I was like I have to know everything like what are you doing because it was just like this essence about her and then I started seeing um the shaman shaman Dern, who's like blown up now like he's everywhere but I worked every every week I went and saw him and it was just such a huge shift and the biggest thing that he taught me was my language to myself which I never even like never even um recognized before you know like saying things like 
oh, I think I want to do that, or I can't do that, or this and that. And he's just like, like a dominatrix, like, no, no, no. Like, listen to what you're saying. Listen to all the energy that you're putting out there. And um, so once I started to like catch myself speaking to myself in a certain way, things slowly started to shift, you know, and it just like really unraveled. And I mean, definitely there's always going to be tests if you want to call it that, coming to you where you're like, okay, am I seeing this from a new perspective or am I going to fall into that like victim role again? Of like, mm -hmm. why is this happening to me? I can't believe like all this stuff always happens to me instead of like maybe seeing that that person's suffering or that person is going through something and they're just giving them, giving you their shit, you know? Um, but really it was that just, I was sick and tired of feeling sad <laughs> you know and I just knew I had to change I had to change that and I had to do something to change that and like seeking like psychiatric never psychiatric like from a doctor never really spoke to me because I felt like that wasn't um what's the word I'm looking for like a real connection I guess it felt very clinical to me that's the word I'm trying to think of like felt very clinical and I and so when I found Shaman Durek and I started working with him all the time, it really just like spoke to me on an energetic level. And then also like, it was very practical at the same time. So, but let me tell you, it's work. Mm -hmm. And that was like his first thing when I came in there, he's like, do not waste my fucking time. Like if you're ready to do the work, then we'll work together. Otherwise, like, no one's going to change you. I'm not going to change you if you're not willing to change. And that's something that I feel like is with anybody across the board. Like if they're dealing with addiction or if they're dealing with alcoholism, whatever it is, it's like if they don't want to change for themselves and it's not, nothing's going to work. You know, you got to really want that. You got to put the work in. Can you explain, because um, it, it sounds like a lot of the things he told you, it sounds like things that a therapist would say. So what is a shaman and, and what, what is seeing, how is seeing a shaman different from seeing a therapist? I think it's important for, for people to know that there are options out, out there and a therapist yeah. is not going to be the right choice for, for everyone. So, um, According to him, like a shaman is someone who like bridges between the earthly plane and the spiritual plane. That would be it. But like, I mean, we never, like, we didn't do plant medicine. It was nothing like, like that. And it, I would say it was probably like a lot of therapy based ideas. But I mean, since I was a little girl, I've been just so drawn to like the esoterics and like that language spoke to me. So that's how I wanted to like take my, like, that's where I wanted my journey to go. It's like, with someone who kind of spoke to my soul on that spiritual level and not just like, well, I think you need <laughs> ADD medicine and I think you need this medicine and this medicine and just start like scripting me things because that's not what I, I didn't want to like prescribe myself or numb myself even more because I was already doing that with drinking mm -hmm. since I was like 14, you know, I've been like numbing myself. So I just, um, yeah, so I think being a shaman is someone who's, like, connected to what they would say the earth or the spiritual plane and being connected to the Mother Earth and her elements and things like that. So I think that's the main difference. But mm -hmm. there's, there are lots of modalities out there that speak differently to different people, you know? Mm -hmm. And he's kind of a badass, too, and I mean a little, like... <laughs> yeah, I know. I like that he like cusses at you and he puts yeah. you back. I remember you would come from these meetings and you'd be like, I cried, like ugly cried for like half an hour. And yeah. you sort of like, it was like, it sounded like an exorcism. Yeah, we did some weird shit in there. It was really cool. <laughs> yeah. I can get into that another time. Yeah, but I mean, that was, that was like, that was the biggest shift for me. And then from there, um, Another big shift, uh, my mom had an accident three years ago, and I had all these, I had now all these tools, right, that I had learned with Sean Durek, but he's now out of my, my financial budget, so I can't, <laughs> and he's all over the world, so 
Um, and at that time, I had no energy phys- to move my body physically. So I stumbled across like a meditation uh, studio by my house. And I went religiously. And I swear on my fucking life, that's what saved my life. Mm. Like, Because I stayed in the hospital with my mom every single night. I was there like 20 hours a day, you know, and like, that was the only thing that like kept me going. And I then again saw what now I like call inner dialogue. I was so noticing like what I was saying to myself and how destructive I was to myself, even after all these years of like being more aware and it just blew my mind. I'm like, I can't be like the only person that thinks of themselves this way you know like even when you're brushing your teeth and like uh like just Mm -hmm. critiquing this little this little face and that's just the beginning of it you know I haven't even gone past my chin yet who knows what else I want to say about that like that's just an example and I just was like this is so fucked up I need like a better relationship with myself and like being able to meditate and like being a witness instead of like being in those thoughts and being part of those ideas, I was able to like find compassion for myself and like create some space where I'm like, now that's someone telling you that you don't have the prettiest skin. You know what I mean? That's your mom telling you your eyebrows are are too furry. That's, you know, blah, blah. Like I'm seeing that these ideas aren't my own ideas. Mm. Mm Mm-hmm. But they're still embedded. <laughs> right. But now I'm not like attached as much as I am to them. That's just like a small example, but like that was the other shift for me was was that time because I, I couldn't move my body. I couldn't do anything. So I was so exhausted. But meditating and 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 then being able to write a little bit about that was such a such a huge shift for me. Was that the time that you recognized? that you had trauma or was it before that? It's a really good question because I always knew I was like raised in such a terrible environment, right? But I guess I never had words as to like why my, um, I never really thought about that. So I guess I never had words at that time as to why I'm always lethargic, why I'm always sad, why I'm always feeling this way. Like I just always had to power through because my mom's motto is don't cry, get up, smile. Like don't embarrass me, just go out into the world. And and so I just kept that energy going in me, but also suffering so greatly. And, um, And I think that was another time where I, was like, you know what, I'm just gonna like honor, honor this trauma and then start to understand it better. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's actually a really question. I've never really thought of it. But yeah. Well, it's hard. <laughs> I think we're all traumatized in one way or another, it, you know, uh, and on different levels. And I think it's, mm-hmm. it's hard to notice it until either someone else names it mm-hmm. or if you see some, something that might be or was similar in your life, you're like, oh shit, like that. Like when you were talking, I remember in my, not in my family, but you know, Asian families, you have aunties and uncles and cousins, but they're not really related. I mean, it's in every fucking culture, but you just reminded me, and I don't remember who it was in the family, quote unquote, but of the moms being really fucking um, physical with their kids and hitting a lot. Um, but it, it was sort of normalized, although that didn't ever happen in my house, but I remember it. That's just like how that it was. So mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. That just brought up, I was like a memory for me. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's fucking traumatizing. <laughs> yeah. It's really bad. And I, like, I just remember not to be like too heavy or deep, but just like, she just chased me around the house, like telling me she wants to kill me, you know? And like, this is like all the time. This is just like, I really fucked up, (laughs) but like that, that like makes you as an adult feel like you're not worthy of so much, you know, like 
your own parents don't want you to like be around and if they have the choice they want to fucking kill you and it's like you, I don't know it's just like it's just there's a lot of work to be done when you have so much trauma and then finally realize it is trauma <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. and I think you don't realize it just reminds me that everyone has trauma <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, and on, yeah. on that note, I, I was just talking to a friend who she lost her mom last year. And so it was uh, yesterday was the one year or two days ago was the one year anniversary of her mom's death. So, you know, she, all this stuff was coming up for her again. And I was telling her that that's kind of my biggest fear. You know, I'm not married. I don't have kids, but I think about like, how am I going to deal with, you know, losing my parents? And the thing that I was telling her was, um, I'm just, either way, I'm just really grateful that I got to be at a point where I saw my parents as an adult, Mm. seeing them with adult eyes, because like Aaron said, everybody has trauma. Clearly your mother has trauma that she's never dealt with and she probably never will. I don't want to say never. She's a very strong woman, you know, um, in good ways and bad, right? But like Mm. being able to see our parents as adults realizing they're imperfect, forgiving them for being imperfect and understanding why they're imperfect is a big step in, in our healing process. Mm-hmm. It's amazing that the, her going through what she's gone through for the past three years has brought you guys closer together and uh, you're, you're being able to see her for her imperfections and, and realizing that a lot of what she did to you was because of her own issues and not you. Yeah, and I, I just like, I feel so terrible. You know, I, I have like so much compassion now that I've like, extracting myself from being like the victim of her abuse you know like now I see her like as you're saying as an adult and like oh my god my mom was doing this at my age like and she's already gone through so much like and I'll call her I'm like I'm so sorry and I'm so sorry to do this alone you know Mm -hmm. at, at at that point in your life like I can't even imagine and so yeah I just like finding compassion for people on any level just really shift so much of how you see them I think that's been like my greatest blessing out of all of this is just being able to like love her as a, as like you're saying and seeing her as a human being and not as like this god figure as a parent you know it's mm-hmm. like she's also a human being she doesn't know any better so have you have you two been able to reconcile or do, does she do you bring it up or is it like in our in our own way mm-hmm. <laughs> you know mm-hmm. she's so proud she's like she's like that korean like she's so proud so like those little blips of, of her saying one or two things i know that's like a huge deal mm-hmm. for her where i'm like the emotional one i'm like mo mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Let me tell you every detail of how I'm feeling. She's like, okay, honey. Mm. Okay. (laughs) For her saying good job, it's just like, whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Like, what? Logging it in my journal. (laughs) Yeah. Date time. Yeah. 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 (laughs) So, So Ange told me, and I didn't realize all this was happening during the pandemic, really, and before, I guess, but that you were changing your careers and now you're, you're launching through all this work that we just talked about and still working through the trauma and all of this. Mm-hmm. Um, you're launching your own company or your own business, I should say. So yeah, I like, I that's not scary. No, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> it's okay. But it's okay. Who does? Yeah. Who does? I don't know. I'm just like, I started my my website's called Inner Dialogue, and I started that a couple of years ago as like a, a, a writing outlet, and I haven't um, written anything in a while, but then it's just now with the pandemic, I've just transformed it a little bit to focus more on like offering services to people like through breath work, meditation, uh, journaling, and I wanted to like come across as like like yoga isn't or meditating is not just about sitting there and like closing your eyes for an hour and like absolute stillness and you know because for me when I first came across I'm like no thank you 
<laughs> mm-hmm. I got other things to do, like drink this bottle of wine, you know? Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you, so I, I mean, it's still growing and every, like I'm just always adding to it. But like you can meditate while you're washing the dishes, you know, you can, medit- like I, I want it to just be more accessible mm-hmm. for people to just see that, just being mindful, really, in everything that you do, even if it's for, for two minutes, just taking two minutes for yourself and, like, really thanking yourself also is another big thing I like to emphasize. Because mm. we'll thank everybody, but, like, like thank yourself, you know? Mm. You're still here. Look at all the shit you've done all this time. Thank yourself. Like, you're a badass. You're resilient. You're smart. Like, but we don't thank ourselves for that. So, yeah, so that's <clears throat> that. And then now that I'm feeling more confident about teaching, I'm, I'm like now offering that too. So, but and yeah. I, and I do have to say that I'm not just saying it because we're friends and I love you, but the class kicked my ass in all the right ways. And it, I, you taught me new yoga moves. I'm not a yogi or anything, but I've been to some yoga classes and you've taught me new moves that I've never done before. And it was interesting having a one-on-one yoga session, which I've never had before. You're normally in a big group and I always like to be in the back or like hiding. Yeah. You have helped me adjust moves that I've done before. And it just completely felt so much more effective and different. I'm like, oh, now I'm, now I see, you know, why yeah. this move helps that. So it really, and, and then the meditation at the end was just a nice way to cap it off. And it's yeah. just, it's a really great class. And I just appreciate you for, for sharing your gift with me. Thank you. And, I encourage people, uh, you know, it's donation based, but you know, obviously there's a suggested, but uh, it's just, it, try it and, and you're flexible with types of classes and you can uh, carve it out to whatever their interest is if, if you want to um, specify. So yeah, I really enjoy definitely. it. It's really changed my, like I said, my, my quality of life and my posture and I, I feel a difference. Thank you so much. <laughs> Kimmy, are, are you um, are you offering classes to the public or is it still to friends or how do you, you know, I want yeah. you to plug yourself. So plug away. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If anyone's interested, just email me or you can go to my website, which is Kimmy Moon. Um, Moon's my mom's last name. So I decided to take that on, but it's K-I-M-I moon.com. And then, um, sessions and they can just email me and we can set up a time it doesn't i I usually do google meets just because it's longer we need to go longer but yeah i'm I'm here and i'm ready to help (laughs) and one other thing i wanted to mention like what i'm learning is like i feel like yoga in the western society everyone just thinks it's postures you know like you're going you're gonna like work out but it's that's just like one element of like this whole map that's been handed down by this ancient you know tradition and <clears throat> like meditations yoga breathing mm. which i'm like huge the on. breathing is big in your class yeah it's really the nice bre- breathing is like so big for me because that's that's like what we have is our breath you know and so there it's like moving physically there's just one element but yeah no thank you yeah. for clarifying because i feel like when people think of yoga right now, it, it is a workout, but it's kind of, it, that's, it's not actually the point, right? I mean, mm-hmm. at all, but it's been Westernized, so. Yeah, totally mm-hmm. appropriated. And yeah, um, yeah. I mean, like the yoga we think of, that's just one element and the ultimate goal is bliss. And before that is meditation. So it's like, you do all these things to drop you into meditation mm. to Attain bliss. So that's yeah. that's yeah. Um, <laughs> well, Kimmy, I don't know, yeah. No, Kimmy, I thank you. Teach here. <laughs> oh, I know. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> that COVID nineteen is uh, it's real. Um, and I don't mean the disease. I mean the weight. Um, yeah, nineteen but, pounds. <laughs> yeah, nineteen pounds and counting. But um, thank you for sharing your story. I know it. It's a lot. Um, but I, I think it, it helps people and it helps people work through their own stories because we all have them. So, 
Um, thank you for being so open. Of course. Thank you for having me. Love you, Kimmy. I love, love you too. You. If you like what you hear, rate and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. For more information about us, you can head to bitchtalkpodcast.com. This podcast is created, hosted, and executive produced by Aaron Lim. My co-host is Angela Tabora, a.k.a. Captain Party. The show's edited by producer Shar. We're powered by GoTo Productions.